So, welcome to the Shortwave Radio Channel. So, this is uh, Radio Romania on 5990 kHz at 0 on UT. Actually, I can boost it here by turning the AGC on. So, what uh, what are the first impressions that I have of the Deep SDR-101? There's a lot of reviews online and a lot of people that play with it. Some don't like it, some like it more, some, you know, see the flaws and depends on what you're looking for. Um, what's my first impression? This is not a review, by the way. A real review will be coming up in the next few days. As I use it a little more. So first of all, uh, metal box and um, you know the knob. It, it kind of feels somewhat a little quality on the outside, uh, but you know this is an SDR, so this is based on probably like an Arduino, uh, which is a small computer and that runs software, and based on you know like the 4734 chip and so on. So basically, it's an SDR, it's a software defined receiver in a portable package. Um, and it is attractive for that reason. Um, small little radio with a display that is and looks like what you have in the uh, big gun SDRs and a big computer. So, of course, the appeal is interesting here. Now, um, first thing that I would say is that the interface is clunky and somewhat awkward and difficult to use um, what have been what would have been fun is that you just click the different sections here and you can deal with them but that's not the way it works you gotta press and hold this button and change to the different options that you want and play around with that and um, it's not obvious at first because I would press and nothing would happen and it's like I have to press quite hard for that to actually work. So it's something that uh, first of all is very bizarre and somebody that doesn't really, you know, isn't used to any of that, you're going to have a hard time trying to figure out how to work with this. Uh, then of course there's no instructions with this. You got to kind of understand what they're trying to have you do here. Uh, with the interface and the different options and what it means and how you can change all of this uh, the colors and you know even change the uh, gain and and have the radio work in the way you want you gotta tweak and gotta play with it now <clears throat> apart from that when you get when you get used to the interface um, comes the reception part what do I think of it it's sensitive. For sensitivity, it's not much of a problem, but there's some FM breakthrough at different places. Not too bad, though. I've uh, I've had worse, and so I can say that there are a couple of places where it's difficult to listen, but most of the spectrum is pretty clear on the telescopic. And, of course, using an outdoor antenna like my MLA-30 fixes that problem because it's not sensitive to FM broadcast so, uh, on the VHF range, so basically it kind of removes the overload problem. But it actually brings another overload problem. The um, receiver itself has a hard time coping with changes in signal level. So you can be from a very weak signal to a good signal in a moment, and then it goes a little too far, a little too strong, and then it distorts. So you have to be careful not to push the gain too much or else you'll have some distortion when the signals get strong. And the receiver has a hard time coping with that from time to time. Uh, on telescopic, it's not much of a problem, although it can still be. But on a MLA-30, like I'm using now, 
it sometimes is a problem with the overload of the, the receiver itself. But, you know, you play with the IF gain and all of that, and uh, you try to figure out what's the best setting for your listening. The frequency is dead on accurate. Uh, this is great. I mean, no calibration of any kind would be needed. It really is very precise, and that is uh, that is really really surprising. Out of this, I would have expected that you know it could be a few hertz off or a few dozen hertz off. Nope, it actually is dead on when you tune single sideband. So this is cool. Tuning single sideband signals uh, works great. I mean, it has the precision in the display. Um, the touch is a little touchy, and what you really need to have a stylus in order to work because you take your fingers and you'll see that the 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 fact that your finger has too much surface on the touchscreen will make it difficult to choose whatever you want to choose. Now I haven't explored totally every single thing yet. Um, I see that the AGC doesn't seem to do exactly what I think. It's more like a gain, an automatic gain of the signal rather than an, a, an AGC and like we uh, are used to in a uh, desktop receiver, for example. Uh, the AM filter is a little wide, 9 kilohertz. I would have liked to have a, a little smaller or at least some choices so that you can choose. Um, the sideband one is chosen correctly at about 2.6, 2.5, something like that. So, you know, works well. It's really the interface you got to really, really um, learn to use, that, that definitely. Apart from that, um, you know, I'm having fun actually. Uh, for the price that I paid, which is roughly 70, 75 US dollars, um, I'm having fun and I cope with the uh, negative sides of it um, and and it's like the ATS-25 not the best thing in the world the interface is also a little slow and clunky but it's kind of fun to play with battery life seems to be very good I've been using it since I received it this afternoon we're at at least more than five hours constant usage right now if not six and honestly, I haven't recharged it, and the battery is still pretty good. So I find that the battery life for a radio that you know needs to power a computer, a small computer, and has a screen uh, that is lit is uh, surprisingly good. And of course, more on that as I use it more. It uh, is, you know, what it is. I would not recommend this to anybody that wants to buy its first SDR, portable SDR. You're going to have a hard time going through this and, and trying to, to figure out. And it has its quirks and reception that you know, constantly need to play around depending on how strong signals are. The display here, not always really nice to use. Sometimes it has these weird artifacts. Sometimes it's so blasted because of the strength of signals that you don't even see the traces of regular signals. But once you get used to it, and let's go here to uh, to tune, when you tune in, I mean, you can play around and you see this, the peaks of the different signals. It's really a portable SDR, really the case. But it's not always as easy as that. When signals tend to be too strong or when there's a lot of things happening, uh, sometimes the, the, the waterfall can get washed out and it makes it difficult to really see anything. Here we go, WWCR. So it's kind of interesting, you know, if we, uh, let's try something here. Let's go to uh, 5505 five, kilohertz and then go to, let's go to, um, mode. See if we hear anything. Propagation isn't very good today. And we hear it a little bit. Notice how it's all washed out here. And you gotta play with, like, for example, remove the AGC to get a standard waterfall, then go and 
pump up the gain instead. Try to pump it up to a level that gives you a, a waterfall that looks normal. And uh, of course, you go and go through the different options. Pump up the volume. Let's see here what else. But uh, you know, you got uh, definitely. So you could hear, could hear five five oh five slightly here. We can go to uh, lower side band. Let me check a. Go to hand bands. Lower this maybe a little. And let's tune around. See if we hear some hams. Not much can be heard. Sure, there are some hams, but uh, and notice how it's weird. Some of the signals, there's kind of pretty stuff happening there. That's kind of weird. Of course, there's the FT4 here. So, anyways, you gotta play with it. Uh, turn in. You see here, once you. Once you put the uh, gain, the AGC to on in some mode, it, it's terribly washed out. Um, it it might be better on the telescopic, but on the uh, on the uh, it's really bizarre. And of course, when that happens, you do not see the uh, the peaks of the signals anymore. So there's some good, there's some bad. Uh, depends what you're looking for. I would say that personally, because I'm having fun with it, I'm okay with the I'm okay with the flaws that it has. But I would not recommend it honestly necessarily unless you just want to have fun and play with a radio that's portable as they are and like i said on the telescopic some of the flaws that you have because of the external antenna are not there so anyways a full real review will come in the next few days and you'll see what i think what i like what i hate uh, but wanted to at least give my first impressions after a few hours if you enjoy my videos please subscribe give us thumbs up thank you for watching